you will not be seeing me walking in literal underwear even if it is bedazzled. Hello and welcome. Today I am feeling sick like death itself. The title says it all folks, today I'll be discussing the 2023 fall trends. Also a quick little side note, I have finally made a tip jar so if you want to tip me that would be much appreciated and help support me keep doing what I'm doing which is making videos for this channel. Let's get into the trends. Like in the past I am categorizing all of these trends by love, maybe and hate love being oh yes i absolutely adore this maybe being a oh, we'll see depending on the circumstances etc hate burn it destroy it get it out of my face get it out of my sight it better never resurface again you get my point as always my opinions will be honest to the point of brutality so expect a little bit of spiciness or a lot and my general rule of thumb is that if it fits my personal style i'll consider it Let's start off optimistic because I feel like if we don't, y'all are just going to click out of this video immediately. Oversized sweaters. Easy to style and layer, functional for multiple seasons. I actually don't know why this is a trend because I feel like this is just fall clothing, oversized sweaters. Literally what I'm wearing right now. These are functional, comfortable, and easy to layer and style. So perfection. Let's go for a maybe next. So recently the corporate girly look has been floating around and they're trying to make it a trend for 2023 fall. Um, the thing is I love blazers but I don't love super formal fashion. I also just don't love a lot of the formal fashion attire such as pencil skirts. Like pencil skirts really just can't do it. I love my blazers. I have so many blazers. If you've seen any of my videos, you know I have a literal blazer collection and I've been collecting blazers since I was like 15, but I love to style my blazers a little bit more casually, a little bit more edgy, or even just more artsy. I don't really like styling blazers in a super formal fashion. So with that in mind, I think the corporate girly looks are cute and they are fashionable and they are functional. They're just not me. Let's go for a hate next. So I already mentioned in my previous video of the spring 2023 trends that I don't really like talking about color trends because to me, colors aren't really a trendy thing. Colors are a personal preference thing. But right now the trending color is all red everything. Red is not a color I'm fond of, so it's an immediate no. It's not a bad color and I have styled it before, but I'm literally trying to sell my only red dress right now on Depop. It's just a very bold color and I'm not into super bold colors. I like pastels a lot more. Also, speaking of colors, have you noticed I got a haircut today, which is why I'm filming this video even though I feel like I'm dying. Very long overdue haircut, actually. Next, we have the gothic slash dark romance. I don't know why Vogue and everybody else is trying to make this sound like an aesthetic. Maybe it is an aesthetic, but either way, this is literally like a darker version of goddess core, which I made a video about like two weeks ago. The way I see it, this is like a gothy goddess core aesthetic. One could even go as far as to argue that this is the dethereal aesthetic actually, because dethereal is ethereal things combined with death-like things. Make it make sense. Point being, I feel like Dethereal is a great way to explain the gothic slash dark romance. I love this. I love the exaggerated silhouettes. I even love the soft body vibes in some of these runway outfits. Because these are quite literally statement pieces, I feel like they cannot go in or out of style, which means that you can wear them to formal events and reuse them, rewear them. Anything that you can rewear for another season or literally just another occasion, I always recommend because because that means that it is actually something usable in your closet. You don't want clothes that are just sitting in your closet. I really love clothes that I can reuse, repurpose for different things. I do this all the time. <laughs> Not only because I can't afford to buy clothes, but because it's really fun actually to make completely new outfits out of old outfits. Also, I feel like this is a great excuse to recycle some of your old other formal outfits. Here's another obvious one oversized scarves. This one gets a maybe and there's a proper reason for it. So this thing trended back in 2015 and I bought an oversized scarf back in 2015 that I am still using very actively and love. To clarify though, it seems like a lot of these trends are actually more like a scarf fully covering you as a form of a shrug 
or a poncho and the thing is i don't really like full shrug or poncho style scarves or that style in general just a personal preference for me obviously i just like regular scarves that are a little bit long or a little bit bulky also anything that is like full-sized wool will make me overheat so fast and i'm actually allergic to wool so i can't wear anything woolen if you gift me anything woolen i will not be able to wear it at all because i will feel like i am literally itching my skin to death I swear I'm the only person with a wool allergy. If there's anyone who's watching this video who has a wool allergy, can you please, in solidarity, comment that? With oversized scarves comes things like winter florals. I like that we are reusing what we already have in our closets, but also I am not really a floral girly from the get-go. My take on this is everything in moderation. I do however like that in these runway pictures you can see a lot of floral designs on top of darker colors like olive green. I feel like that's a really nice way to implement florals into darker themes of fall because if you're wearing straight up bright pink florals in the fall, it, it can feel a little off. So yeah, I do find this to be a very nice and refreshing take on fall fashion and I think it'll be more fun for people who are a little bit more artsy or just like florals in general. However, I don't think I will be participating in it because it's just not my kind of thing. I don't really have that many florals and florals are a little bit difficult for me personally to style. I don't like many patterns and I'm very fussy about my patterns. I think I will be skipping this. However, I like it. Just not on me. I don't know why they keep thinking colors are trends, but here we have navy on black. I am not hating on the color combination as much as I am hating on the fact that they are trying to make this look like a trend. I've been using this color combination since I was 15, so it makes no sense that this is supposed to be some sort of ooh, new trend. Not really, it's just colors of the season. Also, even though this is a pretty color combination, I feel like this is more of a winter style. I always wore my navy on black outfits during the winter because I feel like it's the most appropriate for that season. I almost never wear this color combination in the fall. Let me know what you think. Is this more of a fall or a winter color combination? I vote for winter. Next up, we have art prints. So remember the checkered styles of 2020 or the art print styles of 2022 and how you have probably not seen anyone wearing those clothes anymore? Yeah. This one gets a no for me. I am not here for it. Art prints are so short-lived. They are out of style as fast as they were in style. Personally, this is just me, but I feel like I wouldn't want to wear art that I love on my body. I would maybe like to wear modifications of it. Here I have this Ghibli poster, which I love, my Totoro poster by Sugarman's. If you love this kind of stuff, go give Sugarman's a follow on Instagram. You can't see, but my entire room is covered in Sugarman's posters and postcards. Even though I would like Sugarman's prints, I don't know if I would want to wear Sugarman's art on my t-shirt. Let's talk about two very similar trends that I don't understand why they're calling them trends once again, but we have oversized button-ups and white shirts. Both get a yes from me. Why, you may ask? Have you been watching my channel? Because if you haven't been watching my channel, okay, then it makes sense, you are forgiven. But if you've been watching my channel and you thought I was going to say maybe or no, watch closer. Anyways, with oversized button-ups, you really can't go wrong with them. They are easy to layer. They're good to dress your outfits up or down. They're super versatile. And in the same vein as with the oversized button-ups, white shirts are a staple in your wardrobe and I do suggest owning one if you don't already. I swear they're trying to make white shirts a trend every season when actually they're just a timeless piece. Next up, we have underwear as outerwear. I don't know how this trend keeps staying afloat considering how difficult it can be to style without looking like you walked out without wearing any pants. Like I said in my spring trend, video, certain types of clothes like sheer baby doll dresses or long sheer nightgowns are easy to style via the usage of layering, but that's where I draw the line. You will not be seeing me walking in literal underwear even if it is bedazzled. I do think there is a fine line with what looks cool and what looks like you forgot to wear any clothes. Also, as a bustier girl, it is so difficult to style something like underwear without it looking super overly sexualized just because of my body type. My body type will get catcalled and hated on so much for wearing the same exact thing, uh, maybe skinnier, more neutral body type wears. Point being, this is a maybe just because it's so difficult to style. Speaking of underwear as outerwear, there is a no pants trend. 
and you may have seen this trend on TikTok and Instagram recently. With that in mind, this trend gets a no for me. I just don't think it looks that good personally and it's hardly fall weather appropriate either. I would understand this being a summer trend, but for the fall? Next we have duvet coats. Go back to bed. Enough said. In fact, if I had a duvet coat, I would go right back to bed too. Fuzzy clothes. They get a maybe. They are hard to wash and maintain, but they are super soft. And I love soft, fuzzy things, but they are hard to maintain. I think ultimately, unless it's a high quality material, you won't want this for long because it will get ruined in the first wash. So unless you are like me and you're addicted to fuzzy clothing and you don't mind it getting a little bit of a different texture after you wash it, then I would skip this if I were you. Next we have off the shoulder. Off the shoulder gets a maybe for me because I love the concept but I do not love the execution on my body type so much. Not because it doesn't look good on my body type, don't get me wrong, that looks, that looks great on me. Have you seen my collarbones? However, I would need the right bra or something to help around here. So maybe with the right top or the right bra this would look good but I love keeping my girls secure so unless they are secured it's and maybe at best. The classics such as wool coats and scars and turtlenecks are back in style as if they were ever out of style. They're timeless, they're reusable, and they will never actually go out of style. If you don't have classics in your wardrobe already, I do highly recommend getting them. I have never regretted a single one of my classic purchases, so I can safely say get the classics. The next trend is black coats. Once again, I find it silly that we are making a regular item a trend. However, I too was missing a black coat from my wardrobe for a long time, and I can attest that my $5 thrifted black coat was indeed a very good find. It's impossible to go wrong with this, and it's a great layering piece for fall, so yes, I love black coats. Next we have waistcoats and I say no to waistcoats. I think these are going to be in and out of style so fast if you don't regularly dress preppy. Waistcoats can also look a little awkward on bigger chested people and get a lot of unwanted attention in the chest area. That's the experience that I at least have had personally. Also remember the 2010s vest and waistcoat trends? Yep, those did not look good back then, they will not look good now so unless you really know what you're doing and you really like that style and you like to dress more preppy or like preppy artsy i would skip it if i were you don't get me wrong though they're not a bad look i just really don't see myself wearing them and i also don't see them staying in style for a long time so for some reason i am seeing more of the spring trends resurfacing during the fall than i thought i would but once again metallics are trending and i will once again be saying no to metallics I do however appreciate them when they are being paired with more extravagant materials such as sequin and I just personally wouldn't see myself really giving a chance to metallics unless the colors don't look straight up gold or silver. I feel like gold and silver are very harsh colors. If it were maybe on top of a green silhouette or red or pink, just something else maybe even like a bit of like a blue and silver i feel like that would look very pretty but silver and gold by itself as metallics are a no to me next up we have vivian westwood which is a love but it's complicated it's understandable that with Vivian Westwood recently passing away, there is more attention to her brand. Vivian Westwood is the very essence and timelessness of punk fashion, so in that sense, absolutely love. The thing that I feel weird about, however, is other designers attempting to copy Vivian Westwood's designs or style in general, because the reason why I love Vivian Westwood and the brand is because of her participation in activism. And also, like many other anime-loving people, I also discovered Vivian Westwood through Nana, so there's that. Just getting that out of the way. The point is, I just feel weird about brands like maybe Marc Jacobs trying to do Vivian Westwood-esque like clothing pieces when they don't necessarily follow that same morality or participate in activism in the same way. Essentially, I'm saying I understand that we are trying to pay tribute to Vivian Westwood, but I also feel like that is a great excuse for a lot of brands to be like, hey, you should buy our clothes because we're kind of Vivian Westwood-ish. I think I just cannot get past the marketing aspect of it. I just can't get past that moral ick. 
Next, we have the hourglass silhouette. I love this simply because of the obvious reason that I have an hourglass body. It's hard for me to shop for clothes in my body type, so this basically just offers more options for people with similar body types to buy clothes that are more fitting for an hourglass figure. However, mini rant here, what I really wish for is for more adjustability in clothes. If clothes were more adjustable, different body types could wear the same exact clothes or similar looking clothes. We already do have some clothes like that, like we have the drawstring back, and I have a lot of clothes with the drawstring back design, which I love. So yeah, basically, if we could make the chest and waist areas more adjustable, imagine the endless possibilities. On a side note, I don't and will never support the idea of trending body types. We should never have made body type trends, those should not exist from the get-go, because the message behind those trends is that you need to change your body in order to be beautiful, and your body needs to change with every season and every year, and that's insane. And we should never feel like our bodies are not beautiful as they are. Your body is beautiful as it is. You do not need to change it because somebody on Vogue told you to change it. Body trends are just meant to make money for big corporations, for plastic surgeons, etc. They are not meant to make you beautiful or more lovable or accepted in society. They are simply made to make money. Anyways, that's the body trend rant. Let's go on to a leather set love leather sets you already know how i feel about this item from my old videos leather is a beautiful confidence boosting look however i am not really into authentic leather i'm into faux leather more because of moral reasons speaking of animals my cat is here he said uh animal rights baby next up we have sweater dresses i've owned a couple of these in my life wait hello cool Anyways, I've owned a couple sweater dresses in my life, and each one of them drove me to the brink of insanity with how difficult they were to wear, so I do not like them, I do not recommend them, I do not want to see them again. Burn them, destroy them in a fire, you know the usual. This is Mochi though, you should be needing Mochi! Literally, I got the bear so he could need the bear, but not the deer, come on, that's my not a park deer. Next up, we have Peplum Redefined. This one is a maybe, because this one will go in and out of style so fast if it's anything like we had in the 2000s. Most of the time, they're also in a very awkward cut that makes it hard to layer anything on top of them or underneath them. Personally, I just don't really like especially the 2010s or the 2000s looking peplum tops. I do, however, like the redefined versions on the runway models. To me, they don't even look like peplum tops. They look more like front slit tops or cutout tops. I think to me personally, it would really depend on the cut and material meaning that I wouldn't want them in a bulky or thick material and I would rather have them flare out from the bottom of the top. This honestly would have made more sense as a summer trend because of how difficult most peplum tops are to style. And for the final item, we have circle skirts. I love circle skirts. I think they're very pretty and elegant, they're very 60s and Audrey Hepburn-esque, very timeless, very beautiful, and circle skirts with pockets are the best. And that's it for the fall trends today. Let me know what trends I might have missed and what trends you love, hate, or are maybe considering. And as always, I'll see you next time.